Hi friends, I'm Erica from Flynn Craft House. I'm an artist and educator and I run Flynn Craft House, a small business um, from my home studio. And today I'm gonna show you my sketchbook. I'm gonna show you what I've got so far. So um, the sketchbook that I'm using is the Archer and Olive dot grid notebook. It's a B5 size, I believe, which is like, what is this, like 7 by 10. It's a big size. I like that. It has like a linen-like cover. I did put some stickers in and then it got like dingy and I took it off. And But even though the cover gets a little bit dirty, I love that kind of like linen feel. Sometimes I'll just clip some things in here. I like to have a binder clip available to me whenever I'm drawing because when you're especially at the beginning or at the end your book doesn't lay completely flat so that's important to me. Sometimes I use post-it notes to write notes down. I did date the very beginning when I started this because oftentimes I don't remember like when I began my sketchbooks. This first one was a master study exercise in my Patreon and we created our own version of this work and I chose to use markers for this one so that was mine. We did two more. We did all of these on a live drawing session so we did three studies. Each one of them was timed. I timed them and they were 20 minutes each. So these were the other two studies we did. I think we did another one too. I think we did four total which in in retrospect was too much but hello where are you there anyway this is the second pages right now on my patreon i have a list of prompts one for every week and i also follow along with it so sometimes i draw other things too but i try to do an example or like how i would approach the topic so one of the weeks was strawberries i also provide like a reference image folder or collection and um, there's lots of different photos for everyone to choose from I just show how I organize things now this one I didn't finish so there's that <laughs> this was for a study that I did with my students my high school students and we were painting flowers I was challenging them to come up with a unique compositional approach that didn't look like a simple flower right in the middle of the picture plane. So they could utilize any sort of compositional strategies like zooming in or zooming out or um, cropping on the edges or multiplying them. I just wanted to see how they could be creative with their compositional arrangement. I'm working on a commission right now, so I just have a little sketch in there. I just wanna mention that it took me a really long time to recognize and allow myself to do anything I wanted in my sketchbook like anything I wanted I know that sounds silly but because I always felt like sketchbooks were like this beautiful pristine place but now I, I realize like I should be able to do whatever the heck I want to do in here and it's my sketchbook like why not so I have ugly pages and I have like nicer pages and then I have like notes that I wrote down and I have like things that I wanted to tape in here so you're gonna see that I use my sketchbook for everything. Sometimes I'll, I'll write down like my budget for the month or and, and like completely unrelated to my drawing, but it's because I need a place to write it down and I usually have my sketchbook with me. For this one on my Patreon, we also did a lettering workshop and I provided them with this like worksheet and we practiced drawing within the shapes that I gave them. And I did this one live with my patrons. So I did this, I use this one as an example to work on my sketchbook but I also worked on the worksheet with them. So I did a couple of these, I taped them in, just as little reminders. And then I did this little spread for some like March imagery. And this was again for my patrons. For one of the tiers, there's a physical reward. It's a, a, a print and a sticker. So I was practicing drawing a couple different things. I sell a lot of stickers in my, in my Etsy shop. I often do a lot of little designs, like I'll draw things many things and then I'll experiment with how it might look as a sticker. So sometimes they work as stickers and sometimes they don't, but these two both became stickers like this and like this. So you can see that's how they started. That's how they ended up. 
You know, now that I look at it, I kind of wish this was a little bit lighter. Hmm. And this was the print that I made. So here we go. I share vendors and like who I order things from, but. And then I just, you know, decided I wanted to draw something fun and playful. And I really like lettering. So we had been talking about the lettering for this, like the iconic like grocery bag lettering. This is a spread from um, book club. I was just kind of taking notes. I joined a book club in my local library and we all read a book and then we come and we get together and talk about it. So this is my book spread notes, just writing things that popped into my head or things that I saw or things that I thought of that would be interesting. I like to combine my notes with drawings. Um, then I was feeling a little like, I don't know, creatively struggling. So I decided one day that I was going to paint a whole spread of like faces see how many kind of expressions I could make. So this was just like an exercise, but this was really like, this is really good for me to do when I don't know what to draw. I just do something easy, like, like repeating a letter or like painting it in different shapes. Then I was doing this one outside one morning and I was FaceTiming with my daughter. And so she was on FaceTime and I was using this brush pen and she was just telling me about what she was cooking and I was drinking iced coffee. So I was trying to draw my plants and then I did some studies on mushrooms and for these I was using my Posca marker, these two, and um, I don't know, I mean, I'm, I have mixed feelings about them right now. I just feel like they're so like crusty and I don't know how I feel about that. Um, but I did use my Poscas for these and I was going to do like a whole spread of mushrooms. I haven't finished that. This one was going to be like a study for just like fruit. Again, I was kind of in the same, this was about like all the same days. And I was feeling kind of like stumped and I didn't know what to draw. So I just started drawing um, everything. Like I came up with a topic like fruit or mushrooms or, you know, flowers or something like that. And um, I did this with gouache and I kind of just put the underpainting down. And my intention was to come back with like a color pencil on top of it, but I never did. But I did it again. <laughs> I tried it a second time. And for this one, I did... I did all of these little sketches and I really liked them. So I ended up making this into a um, sticker sheet, which I'll share with you too. I'll post that. Sometimes when I'm lost, I'll just give myself a topic. Like I'm going to draw dogs. And I put a poll on my Instagram and I said, hey, tell me what dog I should draw. And these were the dogs that people suggested. This is kind of like my dog. My dog is like a border collie mutt. And so I wanted to draw her and then... Um, there's this neighbor dog that I see every time I'm driving and he chases my car and I just, I don't know, I feel like I love him, but he's, I've never met the dog and he's probably aggressive because he's rowdy, but um, I wanted to draw him and then other people suggested other dogs, so I put him in there. And for my spreads, usually I'll draw like a topic and then other things that are related. So like if this was Lucy, I wanted to draw also like her favorite toy. She's a big toy dog. Like she loves toys. And one of her favorite toys or two of her favorite toys are her herding balls where she just runs around the yard, pushing them around and growling at them. <laughs> um, then I decided I wanted to draw possum. This was at the request of my, my, my daughter. These actually also became a sticker sheet, which I'll show you. Um, then one day we had a virtual workshop with an illustrator. Her name is Misako Rocks. And I'm not super familiar with manga, but she was doing a virtual workshop and she taught us how to draw like manga. So I took my sketchbook with my students and we all drew with her. And so this is like my first time doing this and um, I'm not the best at this. So I don't know that I'll ever do it again, but it was a good experience, I think. Now, one of the things I also provide on my Patreon is like a, a monthly activity for all the tiers. And this activity this month was cut paper landscapes. You know, we were cutting paper and gluing them down. I really love collage a lot. So I wanted to use that medium in a way to create like another spread. And I had this in my mind for a long time. I've tried it a couple of times and this is the only time that I've actually like put it all the way through. And this one I also did make a sticker sheet, but I haven't actually printed it yet. So I don't know how I feel about it. Like I like it in my book, but I feel like it didn't translate very well when it became digital. Obviously, I mean, it's very tactile. Again, for my patrons, I make a monthly video. And so I decided to do this whole 
uh, video was all about plein air painting. So I wanted to go outside and paint from life. So I went to my local park and I was, I'm, I wasn't painting, I was drawing with my markers, but I just took my materials out there and I drew from life. And so I just picked a few things. There were some ducks out that day. And so I really just wanted to draw the ducks, but I drew a couple of other things that I saw. And then even these right here, there was a man feeding some birds. He was moving, all the ducks were moving. I was trying to capture it as quickly as I can. So it's very loose and I, I like that about it. Next, I did a Zoom drawing session with Katie Moody, who is one of the Patreons that I'm a member of, I'm a patron of, and um, she did wildflower studies. And so they were super fun to draw. Um, she provided us with images and timings and I just drew what I saw in the images and these two. So these were super fun to do. I really like feel like I had a lot of fun with color and texture. Some of the things I wanted to play with more was like these kind of like rough textures or like, you know, not outlines, but like a little bit of a, a softened texture. So I have this, my second one. My next Patreon event is going to be a live stream and we're gonna do one of our prompts together. And this prompt was Lucky Charms and um, obviously in line for St. Patrick's Day. But the idea here was to find like icons or images of things that we consider lucky. Like some of these are cultural, but I think it's fun to do things that you consider to be lucky things. But even some people had specific numbers or specific things that they consider to be like their own personal lucky charms. And so I was very inspired to do this as sort of like a flash sheet, which is like a tattoo tool where you kind of curate images on a, on a single like visual image or visual board so that people can kind of choose the images that they like. One of the things I like about that is that they're usually very consistent in style and possibly colors and they feel very cohesive as a design. So I like that because it really challenges you to take different objects and apply a similar style. I think that's great for illustration. I mean, I'm not a professional illustrator, but it seems to me that as a professional illustrator, you would wanna have a distinct style that you could apply to everything, no matter what. So that's gonna be the challenge for this live drawing session. Now, again, I wanted to do something that was gonna kind of challenge me. So I took um, another patron Zoom workshop, which is with Sarah Dyer. And she's an illustrator. She had a bunch of figure, figural images to do. It was called People and Animals. I, I don't like figure drawing, personally. And it's probably because I'm not very good at it and I've not practiced enough. So my figures always seem to me to be very stiff which is why I just don't do it, but I need to practice to get better. So um, there are all these images and I just opted to use my one marker and make these all like silhouette -y kind of shapes. So um, this is my warm up, And then I was really kind of feeling this like layered, like marker situation where you can create the, the details using more layers of that. So I just stuck with that system and then I did add a little bit of color pencil in here and then this was the last one that I got to there was another one but I just didn't have time I was I mean this was draining for me this was very strenuous mentally just drawing figures bodies of figures I felt like I was like really using my brain <laughs> at the end of this I was like Phew, finally done um but I mean I think that's good for me I think I needed that because it's hard and if we're always drawing just easy stuff, it's, you know, you don't grow, right? So um, and then I took another class with Emma Carlisle and this was the Zoom Portrait Club, which super fun. Um, I don't do a lot of portraits right now, but I have done a lot of portraits before. Portraiture is something I'm pretty comfortable with. Um, I mean, likenesses aren't always there, but that's okay, right? Not a big deal. But she provided a bunch of really fun images because they weren't just static, portraits, somebody like forward facing, they were, you know, yawning or scrunched up faces. And that was really fun to draw. So I was really into this like single monochromatic 
um, marker thing. So I chose one color and I just sketched with that. And each of these were about seven minutes and some of them I went a little bit long, so I had to stop. But um, yeah, I super enjoyed this kind of like layering look that you see here um, where we get to see the values that are created by adding more layers or in the eyes. I feel like it works really well there. Um, but the textures, like, I don't know, a lot. I, I was surprised to learn that some people don't like that because <laughs> I love it. I love the marks. It just makes it feel more like, you know, I always appreciate being able to see the artist hand. I want to see that in artworks and I want that to be visible in my work. Here she was brushing her teeth. This was Trixie Divine. And then I worked so long on this one. Like I struggled here because there's a toothbrush and there's teeth and then the tongue and there's teeth up here and the lips. So there was so many different layers of value here that I lost track of time and didn't get enough time to do this one. So I just stopped with that one. And then there were these two, which I mean, I kind of like this one, but this miniature hand, just the scale proportion wasn't working. So it really like threw me off and maybe the miniature shoulders, I think just, I don't know what happened there, but um, and then this was the last one, which I really liked as well. And I just added these pink boxes to kind of add a little bit more color. Yesterday I went to Sketch Bomb. It's a local drawing group and we just get together. We sit around. Sometimes we have a prompt and other times we just hang out and draw. When you're hanging out with other artists and you're just like, you know, having coffee together, they don't mind that you're not looking at them when you're talking. You're just drawing in your book. And most people don't like that, but artists don't mind if they're also drawing too. So hanging out with other artists and drawing together is very rewarding. So if you have a local art group in your area, I highly recommend that you join and um, or start your own too. Um, and so, you know, I get to talk to other artists. One of them was using color pencils next to me and I like color pencils. So she had a lot of different uh, brands. So I tried all of hers and these are things like I might not have ever tried if I hadn't been sitting right next to her doing this. Um, and then there was a, a dare to try to draw Shrek from memory and I didn't do too great with that. But for this one, I had seen some, um, they call these like yellow trumpet flowers or yellow bells and we call them Esperanza. As I was walking into the sketch bomb session, I saw this Esperanza and I took a couple of pictures and I drew that and I used, um, a brush pen for this. And then I just filled in with some of the yellows from my Tombow dual tip markers. After this, I actually skipped a whole bunch of pages. I forgot to mention this. This was actually earlier than the previous work. When I first started my sketchbook, I just kind of like opened it to the middle and started working because I wanted a flat spread. So I did that for convenience. And so then I kind of went back and started working through the middle, but um, this was some studies for a commission I'm doing. Skip some pages. This was a spread for another one of my Patreon activities, which was folk hearts that we did in February. And then I just did all these like doodles because I was thinking about like folky kind of style. Uh, and then this was our draw with me video for my Patreon. And we did collections. So for mine, because it was February, I was thinking of candy and chocolate. My collection was candy. So one of the things I really wanted to focus on for this was lettering. And lettering is really fun for me. I love drawing labels and packages. So this was a fun experience. I did this one with that particular purpose in mind. So again, all of this is marker and color pencil. And of course me playing with text. I don't think there's anything else in here. I think that's all. Yep, empty. I have my planner back there, but yep, that's the end of my sketchbook. Let me know what you're doing in your sketchbook right now. Thank you so much to my patrons for giving me so much inspiration and so much drive to make stuff. Thanks so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed looking through my sketchbook. And if you have other questions, please drop them in the comments. Check out my Instagram to follow along for my daily paintings. And be sure to drop a comment to let me know what your favorite thing to do in your sketchbook is. How do you make it work for you?